The meta of Marvel Snap has seen a significant shakeup with the introduction of the most recent patch. And in this video, we'll be discussing the top seven decks with some of the cards that got buffed and changed in Marvel Snap's most recent patch, including a quick look at some of the ones that also got nerfed, but are actually still performing damn well. All of the statistics and the decks here were sourced directly from Untapped in order to give us a good indication of how the performance of these cards are doing thus far in this new meta. Let's get started with Kingpin, who's now a two cost card that afflicts enemy cards that enter his location with negative two power. A very strong effect, and hey, look at this, a very strong deck. This deck essentially does a couple things really well. First of all, the Kingpin into Polaris on two and three is extremely strong, but you got Kraven, you got Kingpin, you got Spider-Man, and all these cards forcibly move uh, you know, your opponent's cards into other locations, disrupting their board state. Most importantly, you do have cards like Arrow and Magneto, which can have detrimental plays on turn five and six, respectively, with something like a Kingpin and Kraven. You also have the Mobius and Mobius, which is pretty good in the current meta, considering the amount of discounting that's happening. And if you're in the lower MMR brackets, you are seeing a lot of she -Naught, and Mobius and Mobius just loves that. Regardless, one of the top performing Kingpin, de uh, Kingpin decks currently in Marvel Snap, and as you're seeing, Kingpin is generally pretty viable. Now, what I will say is that there's a pretty large discrepancy between this deck and some of the other Kingpin ones we're seeing by about 4 or 5%, so this one seems to be by far the leading uh, Kingpin deck out there. So, really cool to see. I think it has a lot of potential. Moving on, we're going to go to Quake. Now, we actually have two Quake decks that I wish to speak about here. Now, first of all, Quake saw a significant change where essentially, and now it just swaps the two locations straight up. There's very little RNG and you're able to actually determine where the placement of the locations will be because naturally the ones that you're swapping are just you're swapping the other two, right? So you're playing it where you want the one to remain. A very interesting play with Quake. And the result is we have two decks that have really emerged as top tier Quake contenders. Uh, this is Quake Lockdown. Now, would it be surprising to know that Lockdown is still good? Now, this one is not actually using uh, the... Um, Professor X, but it is still using Storm and Jessica Jones. And what's interesting about this is you can have a Jessica Jones stormed location, and then you can flip the flooded location. That could be advantageous to you because let's say you uh, fl uh, flood a location with Storm and then they commit to it. And then what you do is you actually commit into another location and flip that just so you could win that other location later. There's some interesting mind games you can play. It does take some practice and vision helps to kind of like, you know, ease out some of the errors you might make as you start to learn this type of new gameplay. But ultimately, Quake does have a very surprising uh, factor, especially later in the game on turn five and six. So Quake locked down a pretty damn interesting deck that uh, is showcasing a 56% win rate in a very strong cube rate. Similarly, how do we not talk about Quake 3? Anytime something gets three power and gets buffed, naturally the, uh, the uh, Cerebro enjoyers want to try and fit it into Cerebro based decks. And honestly, a 55% win rate and a 65 cube rate is actually pretty remarkable. Uh, this deck is surprising. Uh, I love the idea of playing Magic. I love the idea of Valkyrie. I'm always, I've always been a Valkyrie believer. And Bast obviously has a lot of synergistic qualities with something like a Wasp, Cerebro, and Mystique. This is actually looking more like the classic Cerebro decks and a little less greedy than perhaps have been in the past. What's also interesting is that the Quake allows you to get access to like Crimson Cosmos base locations and we're still playing something like a Luke Cage to provide some, you know, some just support in the event that you pull some of those negative locations like uh, Negative Zone, for instance. So uh, Quake C3 legitimately a pretty damn good deck now moving on here we're going to take a look at another deck here now we're going to the one of the most recently buff cards not that one that's quake c3 we got big dracula dracula got changed and dracula's check uh text story was a little more subtle essentially it gains the power of the card it discards and it's now a 4-1 that means if you buff dracula as a 4-1 to a 4-2 like an ikea or something it'll actually keep that power and gain the other so Technically a buff, but it can be a weakness if it's hit by Scorpions or by Jotunheim or etc. right? So a lot of changes there, but ultimately this is one of the top performing Dracula decks. And what you have here is a 56% win rate, uh, 0.47 cube rate deck. It's basically a big lockjaw Dracula deck where uh, you got Black Knight. You're able to do a targeted discard with something like a Lady Sif to get that Black Knight value. You have the Hela as well, which is quite interesting in this deck. Uh, you're not seeing a lot of Black Knight Hela specifically, but... In this particular list, because you can essentially use your uh, your 
Dracula to discard whatever's remaining in your hand, which is often going to be an infinite, a giganto, or a death, or whatever, you're often getting a lot of value for the Dracula while also pulling a lot of good stuff out of Lockjaw. Now, the discard element of this is a little, like, different it's not the key focus of it which is kind of interesting however it's basically a lockjaw deck with a discard splash so a pretty interesting deck and currently one of the top versions of the dracula early on in testing now we have a nihilus a nihilus actually didn't get nerfed as much as we first anticipated the initial nerf was uh from the leaks was that he was going to a 5-5 from a 5-7 and has ultimately landed at a 5-6 so that is pretty damn good he no longer synergized with zero cost cards like debris however currently the highest win rate version of annihilus is annihilus bounce at a 56 percent win rate in a 0.39 cube rate a very respectful cube rate a quite a, a honestly a solid deck it's cool to see werewolf by night and enchantress a very strong tech card in the current meta because well you're still seeing a lot of ongoing although the amount of ongoing should drop with the changes of Miss Marvel, so I would expect the uh, more recent versions, uh, or not more recent, this is the most recent version, but as the meta starts to mature, I'm expecting Enchantress to drop off in favor of something else. However, this currently is one of the absolute top decks for Annihilus, and that brings us to Miss Marvel. Now, Miss Marvel continues to be a pretty powerful card in the meta, despite the power nerf from a 4-5 to a 4-4, and now requiring two unique powered cards in each location in order to get the best benefit overall now what i will say is that miss marvel was i mean a staple in the quake deck we showcased earlier which was basically a quake lockdown based deck utilizing miss marvel and now the second best miss marvel deck because the quake one's actually the best one is gonna be the black bolt stature based discard deck and uh i mean this is still a very strong one a 56 percent win rate 0.26 cube rate what you'll see here though is that some of the decks that were just performing better just because they had miss marvel in it are starting to see lower statistics this deck i'm not going to say was being carried by the original miss marvel but obviously it helped a lot and so you take the nerf miss marvel you put it in the same shell and you actually have a lower win rate and a lower cube rate i mean albeit not by a crazy amount but you can see where the nerf takes hold where the effect actually is and so ultimately this is still a very capable deck however the new versions of Miss Marvel I would recommend are the ones like the Quake Lockdown one that we just showcased. Hit the like button if you appreciate this content. If you find it helpful and subscribe if you're not subscribed already, I would really appreciate it. As we talk about everyone's favorite card in Marvel Snap, Loki. Um, You'd be happy to know that Loki's win rate is not necessarily hot. It's running a 53% win rate currently. Cube rate's decent at 0.51. It's actually a pretty high cube rate. But this is currently the highest, uh, kind of the best version of Loki as of recording. And uh, what's interesting about it is now it's still running Quinjet. It's uh, running a Devil Dinosaur based shell here. Miss Marvel still in the deck, uh, which is kind of interesting. I didn't expect Miss Marvel to be included in these decks, but apparently she is still improving the win rate. Uh, you also have the Quake edition, which is a lot of fun here. And again, you have the Coulson for the Devil Dinosaur while also pumping up the Loki. What's interesting about this deck is you can decide just to not play Loki if you want and just play a traditional Miss Marvel Devil Dinosaur style game while also, uh, you know, kind of accruing cards from your opponent via the various means. Uh, cool to see Sentinel making a deck once again. So I'm expecting that there's going to be a lot more Loki experimentation. This is an early riser, but still, I think the win rate's a little low. The cube rate, I still think, is being inflated slightly however what i will tell you is that loki has been hit pretty significantly but time will tell just how hard it was hit in and of its own thank you so much for watching i hope this video helped you and we'll see you in that next marvel snap video